Today, the Bakersfield Police Department releasing the body camera footage of the night back in April when their police dog Django and a suspect were both shot and killed. And as a disclaimer, this video was edited by BPD and it does contain graphic content, which may be disturbing for some viewers. This was the viewpoint from Bakersfield police officer Brock Mueller, who, along with his police canine Django, jumped a fence to catch up with Dalton James Coyman, the suspect who ran from police after an attempted traffic stop for driving a vehicle that was previously reported as stolen. Coyman jumped another fence, and as Mueller and Django approached, Mueller released the dog. That's when you hear gunshots that BPD says came from Coyman, who was firing at Django. Django then runs away as Mueller shoots at Coyman. After Coyman falls to the ground, Mueller then calls for Django. Django here! BPD says they didn't know that Coyman had a weapon until he shot Django. This clip circling the gun. BPD says medical help was given to Coyman, who died at the scene, and Django was taken to a vet but died afterwards. Django was with BPD since 2017. BPD saying in a previous statement that in his time with us, he faithfully served the community of Bakersfield in the field of suspect apprehension and explosive material detection. No memorial plans have been announced yet for Django. And to see the full video from BPD on this incident, head to our website, turn to 23com And turning now to get a look at our forecast here. It looks like things are going to be cooling down this weekend. But first, we want to talk about those drought concerns. So we're going to bring in our meteorologist, Brandon, to get some more details on the very dry conditions that are coming up. But Brandon, I do want to ask you, that storm system that's heading our way, is this going to help us at all? I mean, it's probably going to help a, a little bit, but it's not going to do enough to really make a, a significant dent in the drought. This is pretty well established by now. We've been dealing with these dry conditions for so long that pretty much any moisture from a single system isn't going to do all that much. The big uh, takeaways from the drought monitor that came out yesterday, 100% of California is now in a drought. We we're at about 97% last week. We're up to 100 now. Locally, the takeaway, you see this darker red color. That is exceptional drought. We are now into the highest level of drought for parts of Kern County. So this remains a problem and it's rapidly getting worse. We really see the impacts too. If we take a look at the snowpack, this might be tough to see uh, the actual numbers on here, but the Northern Sierra, 6% of normal. Central Sierra, 5% of normal. Here in the Southern Sierra, 3% of normal. The snowpack is severely depleted here uh, this year. Looking ahead again, we do have some moisture heading our way, some isolated showers and storms possible. With that, we're actually a little bit concerned about the potential for lightning because that could mean some new wildfire starts. And with such dry conditions in Kern County, local firefighters continue to prepare for fire and say that residents with homes in those concerning areas should also prepare too. 23ABC's Austin Westfall has more details on how officials say the drought impacts not only our water supply, but possibly this year's fire season too. We moved into the exceptional category in our mountains because we've already seen a few fires already breaking out. After 2020's fire season, which was one of the worst on record, California officials are on high alert as we head into drier months. Already this week, a wildfire breaking out just southeast of Lake Isabella being contained at 30 acres. It was just an example of how dry conditions are and how vulnerable we are. The National Weather Service saying wildfire concerns played a major role this week in the decision to move a portion of Kern County to the most severe drought classification possible as the county's driest months are likely still ahead. We're not trying to uh, be fear mongers and scare the community, but we want everyone to realize that it's a very serious situation. The Kern County Fire Department's air crews rely on reservoirs and canals to draw water during wildfires. And during droughts, those sources may be depleted. Vegetation is also drier, which means that it will burn faster. So if you can imagine, it's a pretty significant situation. The Kern County Fire Department is prepared around the clock to respond to a wildfire. And they say now is a good time to think about how you would react to one too. Have they created escape plans in their home, let's say for a structure fire? or what they will do if they were asked to evacuate for a wildland fire. Austin Westfall, 23ABC, connecting you. And so far, Governor Newsom has declared regional drought emergencies in more than 40 California counties, including Kern County. And if a statewide emergency is declared, it could open up the possibility of water restrictions at home. 
And also another concern with drought is wildfires. These dry conditions providing plenty of fuel if flames were to spark. And so tonight, actually a small fire breaking out near Lake Isabella and already on alert since 2016 when the Erskine fire devastated that community. So these are videos sent in to Sorry, these are videos sent in to us from our 23BC viewers tonight uh, over in Bodfish. One viewer, Aaron Mead, telling us the fire was around 20 acres already. But we have not been able to confirm any of this information with fire officials just yet. We do have a call into them, but of course we will continue to follow any updates on this story online and our social media platforms. Uh, and we will continue to give you updates on that. Meanwhile, Governor Newsom announcing a wildfire prevention and response strategy today, dedicating billions from the budget to help prevent a devastating wildfire season like the one that we saw last year. Looking more forest health investment, vegetation management, home hardening, but the biggest increase, if you ask what's the difference between this proposal in January and the proposal we're making here today, it's a lot more investment into grants for community emergency response and resilience. Newsom's budget proposal includes $2 billion to purchase new firefighting helicopters based on the military's Black Hawk and improve forest health as part of the state's wildfire emergency response. And the drought and wildfires were not only the focus of the governor's $268 billion state budget that was proposed today. We wanted to take a deeper dive and see what his plans were with the proposed spending. So we can also tell you how it could impact you in the future. So $6 billion will be used on water and drought issues. And then another $8.75 billion will be used to create 46,000 housing units for the homeless. Plus, his plan includes a tax rebate for 11 million people people who would get direct payments of up to $1,100. And he also set aside $7.2 billion to pay off people's outstanding rent and utility bills. And during the governor's speech on his proposed budget, he says a portion of the $750 million in funding is heading for Kern County with the goal of achieving carbon neutrality. Now, carbon neutrality refers to achieving net zero carbon dioxide emissions, and this can only be done by balancing emissions of carbon dioxide with its removal or by eliminating emissions from society. Here's something that's also important to me, and I hope a cause that unites all of us, and that's transitioning to a carbon neutral economy. We're not playing small ball here. And I hope people can appreciate, particularly in Kern County, I hope folks in Kern County can appreciate because Kern County will be the disproportionate beneficiary of $750 million of transitioning to carbon neutrality. We will, we are transitioning from the old ways of energy production and exploration to the opportunities that present themselves anew. On top of this, Newsom says transitioning to greener modes of energy production will help create jobs and solar and wind projects could create jobs for people around the state in an attempt to counter the losses created by eliminating new oil drilling. Newsom has previously proposed measures to eliminate fracking and oil drilling in the state, which would cost Kern County roughly 15,000 jobs. And also we want to note that roughly 70% of Kern's economy relies on the oil industry to stay afloat. Coming up next, a look at how low vaccination numbers not only hurts chances of herd immunity against COVID-19, but can also hurt your wallet. Brandon. But today was our last hot day for quite some time. Cooler weather is on the way. I'll have your forecast coming up. Medical experts agree getting more people vaccinated against the coronavirus can save lives. But as part of our Rebound series, Scripps reporter Maya Rodriguez shows us that it could have a huge financial impact across the country as well. to get more Americans vaccinated moved into a new phase this week with Pfizer applying to move its COVID vaccine from emergency use to full FDA approval. For a lot of people who are on the fence who are worried about, well, is this an emergency use? Should I get vaccinated? It will give them confidence. Confidence that currently appears to be lacking with the number of COVID vaccinations starting to slow down in the U.S. You're trying to reach people who are quote unquote harder to reach. Dr. Bruce Wiley is the senior 
former author of a new study from City University of New York, Baylor College, and Johns Hopkins. Using computer modeling, they looked at the high cost of low vaccination rates. Right now, about one third of the U.S. population is fully vaccinated. If that gets to 40 percent, the U.S. could prevent 24.3 million COVID cases and save $33 billion in medical costs and productivity losses. If that number reaches 70 percent, so-called herd immunity, the U.S. could prevent another 9.5 million COVID cases and save $11 billion. You know, certainly one of the goals is to reach, try to reach as close as possible to herd immunity thresholds. Researchers found even small increases help. Once 40 percent of the U.S. is fully vaccinated, every 1 percent increase above that could prevent 1.6 million COVID cases, 60,000 hospitalizations, 7,100 deaths, and save $2.1 billion. This emphasizes the fact that we just need to get more and more coverage. And even if we can't reach herd immunity thresholds immediately or soon, there's still significant benefit for increasing vaccination coverage. The study also found the timing of when people get vaccinated could also play a critical role. We've observed that the virus probably has at least some degree of seasonality, meaning that uh, transmission of the virus seemed to pick up when the weather got colder or, or less humid. And if that's the case, then it's really important to get people covered before the weather turns again. A race against time with a virus still making the rounds. I'm Maya Rodriguez. Here at 23BC, we are making it a focus to provide you with information on managing the pressure during the pandemic. So we do have additional information on our website, turn to 23.com. Just make sure you look for the rebound section. And let's turn now to our forecast, taking a live look outside. Definitely much cooler than what we've seen over the last few days. And it looks like this cooler weather is continuing as the storm system is moving our way. So let's go ahead and check in with Brandon to get a look at our weekend forecast here. Yeah, those cooler temperatures, uh, one of many nice things we like about the weekend forecast here in that cooler air mass, that upper level load, just getting closer and closer to us. It was very weak earlier in the day. Uh, well, to the north of California, it's made it uh, just to the north of San Francisco right now, starting to feel that influence in northern California and we're going to start to feel the influence of that area of low pressure coming up pretty soon here as it slides down towards us through the day tomorrow. It still settles to our north tomorrow, but we're definitely going to see some of the impacts from it. And then as we head into the day on Sunday, it's pretty much right on top of us. So we're going to get even cooler on Sunday. And that's also going to bring a little bit of moisture toward us. So we have a little bit better chance for some showers into our day on Sunday as well. Let's talk about the temperatures, though. That is the sure thing. That is the definite change we're tracking as we head into the weekend. 85 degrees, your high temperature in Bakersfield tomorrow. 84 is our average high, so we're right about normal for this time of year. Still a couple of 90s off in the desert, but mostly 70s in the mountains and just a comfortable day overall for most of us. And again, we'll get even more comfortable as we head into the day on Sunday. Your winds are a little bit stronger tomorrow. Eastern Kern County seeing some stronger gusts and you see actually to the west too. As that cooler air starts to flow into Kern County, we get some stronger gusts over towards the west side hill. So a little bit breezier with that. Our air quality is actually going to be improving too. It's going to be in the moderate range for tomorrow with an AQI of 74. With those stronger winds later in the day, though, I would not be surprised if we actually had some good air quality by the time the sun sets. So good news as far as that is concerned and some more good news. The potential is there for a little bit of rain with this system. So let's take a look at future cast here. We'll let this animate out again through the day on Saturday. I think most of that activity is going to be to our north. Could see maybe a stray shower as far south as Lake Isabella or maybe even one making it toward the Fraser Park area. But most of us are dry. You see those thunderstorms are off to the north. Into the day on Sunday, as that low tracks a little bit closer to us, better chance for some of those showers as they kind of redevelop along the Sierra Crest there. That definitely will extend or can extend into Kern County. So we have the potential there for some showers or some thunderstorms. Not expecting a lot in the way from rain with those. And if we do see some thunderstorms, we could see some lightning strikes, which could potentially mean fire. So a little bit of a setback there, but overall a great forecast over the next seven days. 85 and 80, your weekend forecast, just a 10% chance for some rain here in the valley for Sunday. Temperatures warming up a 